Shalom, shalom, shalom. This is Amma Wan from the Lions Den Camp of Yasha Allah. Coming at you guys for another lesson. Hope it's edifying to the Akim, to the Akwafim, to anyone that's out there listening. But before I get into it, I'm going to give all praises to the Heavenly Father and the Son and the Holy Prophet two names. And I want to say, call Allah Yimla, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Ha, Rakak, Wadash, Ma'amal. All right, double honors to the apostles and the editors of GMS. And citation to the oculus pushing this truth around the four corners of the earth, man. Also, I'm going to do a double honors to my elder as well. Ahira Wan, by Yasha Allah, of the Lions Den Camp of Yasha Allah. All right. The lesson I'm going into today is based upon how this kingdom of Esau, all right, is failing, all right, and how it's falling, all right, and it's falling hard. All right, and, and, at, and at the same time, in the midst of Esau's kingdom falling, all right, the Lord's people, the righteousness of the Lord's people is being risen up, all right, and he, he, he rising them up again, all right, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, man, so we're in a time of prophecy, man, and I'm just going to go into a few scriptures, man, and I hope it's edifying, man, all right, because this kingdom is definitely falling, and you don't want to be a part of it. You will want to be a part of the foundation of the Lord, all right? Not the foundation of the wicked, because if you're part of that, you're going to fall, all right? So the first scripture I'm going to go into is uh, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. It says, Be not deceived, Yahweh is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap, all right? And this is twofold, man, all right? This can go for anybody, you know what I'm saying? Be not deceived, for Yahweh is not mocked, all right? For whatsoever a, a man sow, that shall, that shall he also reap, man, all right? So the basis of this lesson, man, is going into how Esau has sowed uh, a wicked seed upon the earth, man, in which he deceived a lot of our people, the so-called Negroes, Latino Native Americans, took them, into, took them into captivity, laughed at them when they was in a low state, and still laughing at them, all right? Still slaying our people. All right. And, you know, our people think that just because Esau is in rulership right now and he haven't been touched. Hey, the scripture says, though it tarry, wait for it, man. So hey, wait for the Lord to return, man. Wait for the Lord to do his, his true justice because it's, it will come to pass, you know. So the next scripture I'm going to go to is, is going to be uh, the book of Sirach. Because, you know, when the Lord speaks, it does come to pass, man. So we're going to go to uh, Sirach 21 and 8. Right. It says, he that built up his house with other men's money is like one that gather himself stones for the tomb of his burial. And I was bringing this out because, you know, our people are so invested in this place, man, in this society. You know, and want to build on another man's foundation rather rather than building on the the right foundation. Building building on the stone of Yahusha, you know, on that rock, which is Yahusha, man. Our people want to build upon someone else's foundation, all right, and putting their trust and their hope in these things, man. All right, they get their four hundred one k's, they got their social security SSIs, and all this, you know, benefits of this world, man. But not looking up to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, which is their maker, which is their power, you know, who give us richly all things. Our people are rather running to Egypt for help rather than returning returning unto the Lord for help, man, you know. So it says what? He that built up his house with other men's money is like one that get, gather himself stones for the tomb of his burial, man. All right. So you ultimately building your deathbed, man. Because you're not on that foundation of the Lord, man. You're not on that solid foundation, all right? So with that being said, the foundation that you're trying to build on is going to cave in. Or it's going to blow away like 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 child, you know what I'm saying? Like, like in the wind, you know? It says the congregation of the wicked is like toe wrapped together. And the end of them... Is a flame of fire to 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 destroy them, man. So hey, you don't want to be caught up in in the wrong house, all right? You would rather want to be in the, in the righteous house, according to what 
Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run up into it and it's safe. So you will want to be in a righteous house rather than in, in the wicked house because that wicked house is going to be burnt up. All right. So the next scripture we're going to is Luke chapter 21. Verse 6, it says, as for these things which ye behold, the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down, man. So hey, we're going to, we go, we're coming to these times, man. We're coming into the times of Jacob's trouble. We're coming into the times of this place being destroyed, all right? We're coming into the times of how the Lord is going to bring his vengeance and his fury, fury upon this place, man. So when the Lord do return, it's not going to be no stone upon another stone. It's going to be flatlined. Everything is going to be desolate, man. You know? It says, verse 6, it says, And they asked him, the disciples, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign will, will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Hamashiach. And the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. Con, cause we, we're definitely going coming to these times, man. You know, and we and, and the Lord is definitely showing us the signs and the times that we are in. Cause the scripture says to measure the time diligently in itself, man. You know. Hey, the kingdom is at hand, man. You know, so we we seeing the things being implemented upon this place, you know. And then we also seeing the signs in which the Lord told us to to be not deceived, because there's many false prophets out there claiming themselves to be uh, Yahweh Shai or to be like him. You know what I'm saying? And it's causing our people to be deceived. All right. So the Lord said, look, look not after those things, man. You know, or look, don't go towards those things, but look after them. You know, because these things are definitely going to be a sign. You know, that's letting you know that we're in the end times. You know, but not, but but to not be deceived because Esau is definitely bringing that uh, the vain philosophies and deceit upon this place to keep our people astray from the Lord. You know. And that's why the scriptures talks about in Galatians 6 and 7 how to be not deceived and, and to be not mocked because what? So the Lord, what? It says, whatsoever a man sowed, that shall he also reap. So the, the these deceitful deeds that Esau, the so-called Caucasian race, is, is doing to this world and, and also to the Lord's people. All right. He going to also reap, man, in due time. All right. So let me go back to Luke. Oh, luck is Luke 21. Luke 21 and 9. Right, it says, But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. And this is another sure sign to let you know that we are in these times. Because what? We seeing and hearing of these wars, right? We seeing the high tensions between Russia, China, uh, North Korea, Japan, you know, in the US, all right, aka Babylon, man. We seen the high tensions between these these major countries, man. All right, so that's another sure sign that the Lord is speaking to you, man. Letting you know that we are in the, in these definite, definite, definite times, man. All right. So what it says, but when you shall hear of wars and, and commotions, be not terrified, because we definitely finna see a, a great amount of commotion, especially when this dollar collapse, man. You know, people gonna be running around not knowing what to do. You know what I'm saying? But it's just what, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by, all right? It says, then said he unto them, 
Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. All right. Let me get, get a pre start real quick. This is Sirach chapter 17, verse 17. You know, because it, it was speaking about how kingdom, how nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. But in the midst of all this commotion, all right, the Lord still has his eyes on a set a set uh, of people, all right? And that's the, the children of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man, all right? Out of all this commotion, the Lord still has his eyes on us, man, all right? So that's a blessing in itself, man, all right? But at, at what it says, it says, Sirach 17 and 17, it says, for in the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people, but Israel is the Lord's portion, man. So, you know, we, we seeing the the, the, the the division of these nations, man. You know, we seeing these kingdoms rising against kingdoms, man. You know, and we also seeing how the Lord, in all his stories, all right, in all the books, all right, in the history, it talks about how the Lord set kings or rulers over, over uh, certain nations of people, all right? And in this case, you know, in this time that Esau is the ruler of the earth, you know, according to uh, Job 9 and 24, it said the earth is given into the hands of the wicked and he cover up the faces and the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? All right. And that's the nation of Esau, man. All right. The so-called Caucasian race. man. All right. So it's just for in the division of the nations of the whole earth. He set a ruler over every people. But Israel... It's the Lord's portion, man. According to Deuteronomy 7 and 6, how the Lord said he chose us to be a special people unto himself, to be upon to be above all nations upon the earth, man. So that's our gift from the Lord, man. All right. But at the same time, we in, we on we on punishment right now. You know what I'm saying? We on punishment, but at the same time, the Lord is, is raising us back up again in the midst of our punishment. You know, because the Lord gave power to Esau to rule over us, to be a, a whooping stick. All right. So let me go back to Luke. 2 to 1. I love that. It says, And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights. And great signs, and great signs shall be there, shall shall there be from heaven. All right. So, so ultimately, the Lord is, is definitely showing, is giving us those signs to let, to let us know what times that we are in, man. All right. Let me go to Isaiah because then yeah, we done, we we in some treacherous times, man. We in the times of Jacob's trouble, man. Isaiah 24, verse 20. It says, The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage. All right, so this place is going to be utterly shaken, man. All right, it's going to be so much commotion, so much uh, up, 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 uproars going because the uproars of the people is here as well. All right, and we're going to definitely see more and more of this place being shaken up when when everything take place when this dollar collapse when that, that the uh the world's reserve currency is no more all right and it's translated to a digital currency in which it's not going to be that the u.s currency it's going to be we don't know what it, what it's going to be but it's going to that digital currency which and it's going to bring hell upon our people man, even more all right so what it says the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage, and the and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall, and not rise again. You know, so this place here is gonna fall, and it's not gonna rise again, man. You know, it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high. And the kings of the earth upon the earth, man. So, hey, all these high ones, all these ones, all these men that's ruling the earth right now, that's in, in, in authority, as they say. All right. The Lord is going to smite them and bring them low. All right. 
It says what? It says, I shall punish the hosts of the high ones that are that are on high. And the kings of the earth upon the earth, man. Hey, so the Lord is gonna punish these these nations, man. All right, little by little, as 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 the Lord bringing them them down, little by little, He's bringing us up, man. All right. So let me go to Proverbs. So before I go there, let me go to Deuteronomy 32, just to go into more about how the Lord put power, put people in power, man, you know, and set them up according to how he wanted to be, you know. Deuteronomy 32, verse 8, it says, when the Most High divided to the, to the nations their inheritance when he separated the, the sons of Adam he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel right so the Lord he, he had set bounds for every nation of people a set measure of power you know you know according to what uh, according to his uh, his rule man so it's what it says when the, when the Most High have, have it's like it says when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, so He gave each each uh nation their inheritance, right? It says when He separated the sons of Adam, He set the bounds of the people according to the number of children and children of Israel, man. So He set the bounds, all right, to every nation, man, all right. And Esau, him being on top right now. According to Job 9 and 24, all right, he's in rulership, all right, but it's only for a little season, man, you know, it's only for a short, a short period of time, all right, Cause, uh, well, verse 9 says, for the Lord's portion is his people, again, that's, that's plain and simple, man, it's more proof to let you know that the Lord's people is the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, man, you know, because Jacob's name was later translated to Israel because he had 12 sons. All right, it says Jacob is the lot of his inheritance, man. So ultimately, we know about the scriptures in Deut Deut uh, not Deuteronomy, but Genesis chapter twenty-five, how the how the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So this current kingdom is going to be translated from one person to another, man. All right, and yay, they Esau is in rulership, but like we like the scripture says, only for a little season, man. So this kingdom is going to be translated into the righteous nation of his people, man. The 144,000. Alright? As well as to one third of the nation of Israel. But Yahweh Shah is going to be the king. You know? And that one third includes men, women, and children. Alright? So let me go to uh, let me go to Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 6, 16. It says, For thou hast power of life and death. Thou leadest to the gates of hell and bringest up again. Come, man, because the Lord has power to, to, to kill and to, uh, and, to, and to make alive. And the scripture says what? He says, I heal. It says, uh, I kill and I wound. Let me let me get it instead of me messing it up. Shalaki. All right, this is Deuteronomy 32 and 39. It says, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So the point I was making that the Lord, he kills and he make a lie. He wound and he heals. So he's the one that puts whoever, whoever he wants or whomever he pleases to be in power. Right? Setting those bounds. So wisdom of Solomon 16 and 13. 
It says, For thou hast power of life and death. Thou leadest to the gates of hell and bring us up again. Just like how, how the Lord led us to the gates of hell. And, and for Esau to be that whooping stick to bring distress upon his people for a punishment. You know? But at the same time, he bring us up again. So by us going through our, our trials and our tribulations, the chastisement of the Lord, because that's what the scriptures say. This is the Lord chastising whom he loved. So we being chastised right now, man, you know, and built up in the spirit to be able to regain and to rule in righteousness, man, again, all right? So let me go down to verse 24. It says, for the creature that serveth thee, who art the... Who art the maker? Incre increase of his strength against the righteous. So like it says, increase of his strength against the unrighteous for their punishment. And abate of his strength for the benefit of such as put their trust in thee. So for that creature, man, that serveth thee. You know, that's speaking about Esau, man. The so-called Caucasian race, man. You know, it says, it says the maker increase of his strength against the unrighteous for their punishment. So the Lord bound them to put hell on us, man. You know? You know? He, he put, he, because, hey, Esau and these other nations, they, they definitely afflicting the children of Israel, man. You know? Hey, the scriptures talk about how to, how to rich, you know, uh, get, get, uh, get rich and the poor get poor. You know? And Esau is pretty much biting down on the children of Israel with his teeth, with, with the, uh, the afflictions, man. You know? So again, it says, He increased his strength against the unrighteous for their punishment and abate of his strength for the benefit of such as put their trust in thee. So that word abate, the, the root word is abate. It means to to decrease in force or intensity, to become defeated or become void, to to decrease in value. All right. So it says what an abate of his strength for the benefit of such as put their trust in thee. So the so the Lord had had gave them strength, right? To get to put to be a punishment against us, but at the same time, he decreases his strength or he decreases his value in strength for the benefit of us, right? For the ones that's putting their trust in him. And that's for the righteousness, the righteousness of his people, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, all right. The ones that wholeheartedly trust in the Lord and that's calling upon his name, all right. That's not going down to Egypt for help, man. You know? But the ones that's trusting in his power, man. That's standing upon his foundation. Their foundation, all right? All right. So let me go to... Uh... I'm going to go to Proverbs 11 and 27. It says, He that diligently seek of good procure favor, but he that seek of mischief, it shall come up, come unto thee. Or come unto him, shall lock you. So he that diligently seek good, and that's the one that's seeking the, the, the wholesome words of Yahweh by some Yahweh Shah, seeking the Lord's face, seeking knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you know, seeking to please their power, you know. It said, "He that diligently seek of good, procure of favor." So you you receiving favor, man. But he that seek of mischief, shalaki. But he that seek of mischief, and that word mischief is trouble. It says, "It shall come unto him." All right, and that's what Esau, that's what's gonna come upon Esau. Everything that Esau is doing to uh, to the nation of Israel, it's going to ultimately fall upon his head, all right? These snares and traps that he's laying 
all right, privately for, for, for our people to get caught up in, all right, ultimately it's going to it's gonna fall upon his head. He's going to fall in his own trap, all right? He's going to fall in his own pit, man, and he's going to be consumed, all right? Verse 28, it says, He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. Come on, man. So a hey, Esau, he trusted he his might is in his riches, you know, and we see the the downfall of 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 Babylon, aka America. So when hey, the more and more this 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 kingdom fall, Esau is gonna fall with it. And like I said, this, the same thing that uh, as the, the, this this kingdom falling, this wicked kingdom falling, the righteous is being built back up and it's rising again. And it says what. The righteous shall flourish as a branch. Right? So we're going to go to Proverbs 28, verse 10. It says, Whoso causes the righteous to go astray in, in an evil way, he shall himself. It says, he shall fall himself into his own pit, but the upright shall have good should have good things in possession. Come on, man. So, the wicked, all right, that causes our people to go astray in an evil way, got our people worshiping these these uh, these vain philosophies, man. Got our people drunken with, the, with these philosophies, man, in vain deceit, man, you know. Speaking sweet, buttery, smooth things unto our people, all right, and it, and it's full of lies, man. You know, and we and we seeing how we saw how they they they, they straight lied to our people with this this thing they they, they 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 was presenting to the people, man. You know, making them go get it. You know, but the scriptures tells us to, to be not deceived, man. You know. When they speak lies, man, you know when they when they speak because when they speak, it's speaking of lies. All right. So Proverbs twenty eight and ten, it says, "Whoso causes the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit." So ultimately, the wicked is gonna is gonna be consumed by his own works. All right, and he's gonna fall. It says, "But the upright shall have good things in possession." Con the upright, the righteous. It's gonna have good things in possession, cause why? We're gonna we're gonna gain the kingdom. We're gonna gain the, the everything. We're gonna we're gonna have we got the promises. We got the covenant. All right. We're gonna be rulers of all over over all the nations of the people. We're gonna have our oppressor. Our, we're gonna have the oppressor in captivity. All right. So it's a lot that's gonna come. To the children of Israel that, that, that trust in the, in, in the Lord's words, man. That trust in his might, you know. Not the might of men, all right, because the scripture says the mighty men is going to cry there bitterly, you know. Let me go to Isaiah. Got a few more left and I'll be here. This Isaiah 28 and 16. It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. God, man, he that believeth in the Lord. Yahweh Bosh Yahweh Shai will not make haste. Alright. Will not make haste to run to evil. Will not make haste to run into the, the wrong house. Will not make haste to do evil. You know what I'm saying? But it's just what? It's just behold, the Lord had laid a foundation for us, man. A stone, a tri stone that won't break, that won't crack, that won't collapse, that won't cave in. You know? A precious cornerstone. A sure foundation, right? And that sure foundation is your side, man. So it's 
So it says, he that believeth shall not make haste, man. So that's a foundation that you want to be upon, you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. All right? Because you're not going to fall. And you're going to gain everlasting life. And you're going to gain everlasting riches. You know? And you're going to be glorified from the Father and, and the Son. You know? So everything that you, you want to do on this side is it's all about, it's all vanity. So it's best that you wait on the Lord. It's, be, it's best that you seek good and seek the Lord, you know, so that you maybe could be able to attain these things that the Lord is presenting, presenting to us, man, you know. So the last scripture I'm do... Timothy two verse nineteen. All right, and it says, "Nevertheless, the foundation of Yahweh standeth sure, having the seal, having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are His, and." Let every one that name of the name of the of the Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach depart from iniquity. You know, so it says what? Nevertheless, the foundation of Yahweh standeth sure. Again, you know, the house of the Lord standeth sure. It says, having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are His. So the Lord knows who are His. The scriptures say. My people hear my voice and they follow me, you know. So the ones that's seeking good, seeking the face of the Lord, is going to hear the Lord, you know. And they're going to follow him, all right. And they're going to be set on that good foundation, that solid foundation, that sure foundation, all right. And they're not going to be consumed and they're not going to fall with this place, man. That's why the scripture tells us to... to Blow the trumpet, you know what I'm saying, to our people and, and, and show them their transgressions, man, so they can return unto the Lord, man, so they can be able to receive all these things that's to come, you know, turn from their wicked way, leave off from iniquity, all right, depart from it, all right, so that you could be on that solid foundation of the Lord, man, because this kingdom is falling, it's nothing here for us except the Lord, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. They are they are our comforter and our help, you know. So with that being said, I'm gonna say shalom.